I absolutely love it when cruisers who watch my videos come up to say hello on board ships, like my recent Norwegian Viva Mediterranean cruise, where I met so many people. I decided to ask them what tip, hack or trick had the most changed their cruising for the better that I should share in this video of pro cruise tips. We agreed on five of them that we all agreed could change your cruising as much as it did theirs. And as you'll see some, including the last one, may sound rather mundane at first, but can make a massive difference. If you're new here, by the way, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge, making it fun and easy to plan, discover and enjoy incredible cruise vacations. And now let's get on with those cruise changing tricks. The first reminded me when we went on cruises with my mother and mother-in-law, they would repeatedly get lost and confused about which way to go, especially when leaving their cabin. They were a complete nightmare. It wasn't until later in my cruising life that I actually discovered what savvy, experienced cruisers already knew, and that is that there are signals that cruise lines have put in place to help passengers like my mum not get so lost, although signals that I must admit I still rely on today. So for example, cabin numbers always start at number one at the front of the ship, and as you walk towards the rear of the ship, the numbers go higher. So I could tell my mum if the numbers were going up as she walked along the corridor, she was heading to the rear of the ship, and if the numbers were going down of the cabins, then towards the front. It actually transformed cruising for my mum in terms of finding her way. Now, people I met on Viva pointed out that Norwegian makes it even easier with adding signals into the carpets as well. So on this particular ship, it was triangles pointing the direction to head for the front of the ship. On their other ships, older ships, it's the direction that fish weaved into the carpet design are swimming. I must admit, I relied on the triangles in the carpet every day on my Aviva cruiser when I was moving about to ensure that I was heading the right way. Really important on a big ship like that. Other lines have added even more signals. So I was recently on a Disney Magic cruise and they had little metal fish above the door numbers that always point direction to the rear. And then I realized that the map in the carpet, if that was the right side up, that was the direction towards the front of the ship. So again, great signals. Another signal that I used uh, a lot with my mum is that on most but not all ships, the even numbered cabins are all on the left hand side or the port side as you're facing the front of the ship and the odd numbered cabins are on the right hand side or the starboard side of the ship as you're facing the front of the ship. So that's how she could tell kind of left and right on the ship. Now some lines like Cunard made it even easier for her uh, when we went on that ship because they had red carpets on the port or the left hand side and blue on the starboard or the right side. So it made it even simple when she counted the lifts to know which side her cabin was on because she just had to remember the carpet color to look for. So one great trick is to use these and when you're bored, check if your ship has any specific added signals like those that I mentioned that I had on Viva. It's gonna make finding your way around so much easier. But the next one that people I met suggested that I include was about saving money, which of course everybody loves, but they felt too many people were missing out on this one. And that is booking a future cruise or buying a future cruise deposit certificate while you're actually on your cruise if you want to sail on that line again in the next couple of years. Now, so many of the people that I met on Norwegian Viva told me that they were doing this because the line was giving $100 onboard credit for every future cruise deposit certificate worth $250 that they were buying. Now, if they bought four certificates, that was going to be $500 onboard credit, not just $400. Now this bonus was only available booking on the cruise, nowhere else. So booking on board always has discounts or added extra onboard credit that you cannot get anywhere else other than on board. But importantly, any booking can still be linked to the travel agent and they often will allow no penalty changes, at least to bookings that are made on board. So this is a really big plus because cruisers like me from countries like the UK do not get refundable deposit booking options any other way. So for example, a booking that I did on my previous cruise to the Viva, which is Region 7 Seas, also part of the same group, that allows me a one no penalty change that I wouldn't be able to get if I'd booked that back home. But what if you don't want to cruise on the same line? So I met people on Norwegian Viva that like to jump between cruise lines like me, and we all agreed that this next little trick and pro tip was something that's just simply not known enough either. And this is that some, though to be honest not enough, cruise lines will status match our loyalty when we try a new cruise line. Now I have varying degrees of loyalty across lots of different cruise lines, but I'm often trying cruise lines that I haven't been on before 
or I haven't been on very much. A few cruises before the Norwegian one, I went on MSC Virtuosa to the Norwegian fjords and they status match other cruise lines and even high hotel or airline status. So I gave them proof of my top tier diamond status on Cunard that I mentioned earlier and they matched it, which unlocked perks like free specialty dining, onboard discounts, priority embarkation and disembarkation. At the time of making this, Virgin Voyages are also doing the same. Some cruise lines also share status within the same broad group. So for example, I had no status with Royal Caribbean, having only cruised on them once before, but I did have high diamond status equivalent on their sister line, Celebrity Cruises. And so they matched that, giving me perks like access to the Royal Lounge with snacks, coffees, and happy hours. So we all felt that cruisers need to know to check whether any new cruise line that you're looking at will status match any law to program and status that you have. Now, unfortunately, Norwegian does not status match, but we all felt there were some things that we'd seen cruisers still miss out on this trip uh, and other cruise lines as well that people should actually know about. And there are actually five things that we felt people were missing out uh, on these various cruises. First of all, by not going to the art auctions like the packed one on Norwegian Viva, people were missing out on the free drinks that were served at those auctions. Secondly, by not going to the spa on embarkation day and getting a raffle ticket. Now the draw uh, on the Norwegian took place just after we set sail and you have to be there to win. So prizes all went to the relatively few people who'd remember to turn up for the draw. Now I didn't win on this trip, but frequently have won free spa treatments this way on a number of lines by just simply making sure that I'm there for the draw. So many people forget to go. The third one was, although I didn't go actually to this one, is they, the various shopping events because they will launch kind of new lines on board. Many of the people I spoke to, they went, you get free drinks, you get raffles for gifts and so on. The fourth one was going to the port shopping talks, particularly in Alaska, the Caribbean and the Mediterranean, because there they will hand out loads of freebies, you know, stickers, bracelet charms. And then you can also go each day to the shopping desk, collect another one, or you get other free ones by visiting certain nominated stores like Effie, Diamonds International, Tanzanite International, Del Sol, Color Change, and so on. Now, the fifth thing that we felt people were missing out on was going to cocktail parties you get invited to. I was invited to a couple on this particular trip and there's always plenty of free drinks and canapes on ones I've been to on other cruise lines. But perhaps the most striking thing we all got excited about and agreed that more people really need to know about and factor in was not something sexy at all. It was actually something rather mundane. But we all agreed this one is great for cruisers who like to pack light or just travel with carry-on bags. It's crazy costly getting laundry done on many ships. Norwegian Viva included, it was really expensive. And also they don't have guest laundry rooms to do our own laundry. But we all love the fact that they, they have an offer where you can send a bag packed full of laundry for a set price. And a lot of lines run this part way through the cruise. So on Norwegian Viva, it was just $29 for a massive big laundry bag, which we could pack full of laundry and that's all it costs. Now this cruise was 10 days long. So I could pack light because I knew that this offer would pop up part way through the cruise. So I always ask my cabin steward when I get on board, when the offer will be run and I plan my kind of washing around that. By the way, also check your loyalty program status or cabin perks, because many of these actually include free laundry. Like when I was on that Royal Caribbean cruise, I got, uh, that I got status match on, I actually got free laundry. Now, are there any other things that you think really smart pro cruisers should talk about more and let people know about? Leave those in the comment. But before you do that, why not join me over in this video because you're going to find out seven things that smart cruisers do when they book their cruises and why. See you over there.